Right, so it's one year since Liz Truss's mini-budget, the infamous fiscal event, sparked a huge economic fallout, and it was ultimately the undoing of Liz Truss. After the markets were spooked, when the Office for Budget Responsibilities forecasts were not published alongside the plans. Well, today, Labour have pledged to give more powers to the OBR. They claim it will stop Truss's disastrous mistakes being repeated. But there is quite a lot to unpack here. And here to do it is economics and business editor Liam Halligan with On The Money. Yeah, two key points here for me, which is, I suppose, was Liz Trust right and how she's getting on now? But also, the OBR, giving them a bit more power, is that a good thing or not from Labour? Well, Liz Truss started this week by making her first big speech since being basically bundled out of office last autumn, having been the shortest serving Prime Minister in British history. And the essence of her speech was, look, the situation under me wasn't all that bad, even though you all think it was. Interest rates and mortgage rates when I was in office were lower than they are now, all of which is true. She also was trying to convey why it was that she didn't ask the Office of Budget Responsibility to check her fiscal plans back at the time of that controversial mini-budget in September, October 2022. Uh, and Labour are kind of trying to piggyback on what she's saying by, 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 by pledging when they're in office that anything they do fiscally, they will get the Office of Budget, Budget Responsibility mm. involved. The OBR is, of course, a group of independent civil serv servants who scrutinise government spending plans and basically, Patrick, say whether or not they think they stack up. But is that OK? I mean, how independent are they? Should they be getting more power? Have they been right previously? Well, Liz Truss says that she didn't ask them to look over her plans last September, October, because it was indeed a mini budget. The scope of the measures, she claims, w was relatively small compared to, you know, a usual budget or autumn statement. I think what's also in, in the offing here is that a lot of people feel that the OBR is unduly pessimistic. They always seem to overstate the amount the government's going to spend and understate the amount that the government's going to collect in tax revenue. So whatever the government does, the fiscal position, according to the OBR's forecasts, often turns out to be a lot better because of the, you know, the, the outcomes aren't nearly as gloomy as the OBR suggests. And Liz Truss said in her speech earlier this week, and indeed when I interviewed her um, afterwards, she said that these OBR forecasts, they actually forced her hand. They stopped her as an elected politician, indeed a prime minister, doing what she wanted to do. Because information was leaked from the OBR, whether by OBR officials or other ministers who had seen OBR estimates. It got into financial markets. Financial markets took umbrage before Truss had a chance to explain herself. And so Truss wasn't able to do what she wanted to do. So this whole debate about the power of the OBR, it really goes back to what is called in culture wars terms, you know, ministers versus the blob. Yeah. The OBR is seen to be part of the blob in some eyes. Um, I would say, uh, objectively, the OBR has been pretty out of whack over recent years. It has indeed been overly pessimistic compared to outcomes. And also, when it forecasts, Patrick, it never really takes into account the implications. Oh, if we lower taxes, you may get some more growth, so you may get some more That's revenue. A fascin that is an absolutely fascinating point and a key point going forward with what Labour appeared to be suggesting. So, realistically, putting more weight onto the OBR when it comes to the government's own decision-making, etc., would probably mean the higher tax. It probably would. It would probably mean a more statist outcome. Look, there's this, I know it's Friday afternoon, but let's just, just bear with me. There's this thing in economics called the Laffer Curve, right? The Laffer Curve was written on the back of a napkin by a famous economist called Art Laffer, and it basically said the higher the tax rate, the less revenue you're going to get because people... People do less stuff because the tax rate is so high. So there's less activity to tax. There's less growth. People also evade taxes and so on. And a lot of people think that the OBR doesn't take that into account. The fact that if you lower taxes, you get behavioural effects, dynamic changes rather than static analysis. If you lower taxes, there will be more activity. Entrepreneurs will do more because there's more incentive for them to do so. So actually lowering tax rates, this is Liz, what Liz Trust believes in profoundly, lowering tax rates can actually lead to more tax revenue. And raising tax rates sometimes can lead to less 
tax revenue. Now, some people on the left would say that's complete pie-in-the-sky fantasy right-wing economics, right? Yeah. But history shows that it is often the case. It is often the case that the Laffer curve works. That's why it is one of the most enduring and widely respected sort of pieces of economic analysis that mm. there's ever been coined in, in the world. And that's really at the heart of this, this row, with Labour trying to take advantage of the fact that Liz Truss is, is credibility is seen to be dented. A year on, she's come out of the shadows to make a big speech, yeah. and Labour want to make political capital out of that. Yeah, but again, could, you know, could it be something that backfires for Labour? Because now, again, this could well be, given what you just said there, a bit of a stick that people can... Yeah, it could be a rod for their back. Yeah, It could be a rod for their back. Exactly. I, I think it's been, uh, again, it's been a fascinating week yeah. in politics. Look, Liam, thank you very, very much. Liam, welcome there. Our economics and business editor.